And I think it's also a way for me of saying that um, thank you for the struggle. Um, although the struggles are almost similar, but something has happened, mm. right? There has been a, a change, there's been a shift. Mm. Uh, because when we don't see that change, when we don't see that something has happened in between, yeah. we mm. feel like we start, we have to start from zero. Yeah, mm. and, and it's so, also very frustrating. And exactly. When we don't see anything happening. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I don't think we have to start from zero. And that's why I say we continue with the struggle. Mm. Uh, but we don't have to start from zero because there were people before. Mm. And so, and I think it's our responsibility mm. um, as a younger generation um, to always acknowledge that and mm. remember that mm. because when we do that, we will not make the same mistakes. Mm. One, yeah. we learn something from it. Mm. And thirdly, we uh, we take it mm. over and it becomes something that is sustainable. It mm. becomes something that doesn't always have to start from zero, mm. right? Because when you start from zero and you say you are the only one or, you know, it, uh, um, you are only the first one. Mm-hmm. What exactly do you do at the university? What is your job? Yeah, you so at the university, and I'm going to make a little bit of advertisement. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm at the University of Cologne and uh, we are actually the first university in Germany to have a position uh, of a, a representative for anti-racism. Mm-hmm. So racism okay. critique. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, also to have me as a referent in your um, anti-racism, mm. um, referent in your racism critique. And we are the first universities and we have structures. Well um, done, Cologne. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, mm. um, all other positions are always attached to something else, but mm-hmm. ours is in particular only about anti, um, anti-racism. anti Hello, everyone, and welcome once again to your favorite conversations, Far From Home Diaspora Conversations. Thank you for tuning in, like always. We are so glad that you're here. So uh, if you tuned in last week, you noticed that we had our lovely guest, Dr. Njeri, and our conversation got really, really, really long because, you know, she has such interesting information and the conversation was getting too long for one podcast, so we cut it. And today we are continuing with that same conversation. Of course, not the same. We are continuing from where we left off last week. Thank you so much. And we also, at this point, want to recognize and, you know, thank our sponsors, TDX Media, who have been with us all this time, supported us and uh, moved with us along the way until now. And we'll be telling you more about them as we go on. And now to our conversation with Dr. Njeri. You say a lot, and I appreciate this a lot about you, that you always say you're standing on the shoulders of people who came before you. Mm-hmm. And um, you mentioned a lot a lot of the women. You, you talked about Adifra women, uh, but also all these people who have come before, and you are continuing this journey. Um, does it get frustrating for you sometimes with this knowledge um, because w- once you've looked at it so much from the inside out, um, sometimes it can feel like nothing is changing. Mm-hmm. You're fighting the same fight that was fought in the 60s. Does it, does it feel this way? Is it still the same fight we are fighting that we were fighting in the 60s? Has it changed? Um, and does it get frustrating for you? And fourth question, of course, I always have many questions. How do you deal with that? So I think I forgot to mention one thing. I always say I'm a child of the community. Mm-hmm. I've been raised by our Kenyan mothers, aunties, and mm. sisters. Mm. Um, and um, and I think it's important that we acknowledge these women yes. because we sometimes forget. Mm. Um, and I do not want to forget because I know that... Um, even when I, sometimes I refuse to say the doctor title or even where I have reached now... I know that many of them are very proud because, mm. you know, these are also the women who also brought me up. Mm. And I grew up at a time uh, also in Cologne where, uh, you know, also the women were watching, right? Uh, just like we have it at home that, you know, you're a community child. Mm. I was a community and I am still a community child. Mm. Um, yes, the struggle has, of course, changed. It's 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 not the same. Um it's not the same in, in, in terms of, you know, uh, we can be able to go to the university, uh, which we know a lot of our mothers, aunties and uncles uh, were not able couldn't. to do, couldn't. Mm. Uh, their certificates were not recognized mm-hmm. or, you know, when they wanted to go to the universities, then they, you know, you either had to change what you had studied before. 
um, uh, there were not so many uh, possibilities uh, of um, of continuing with uh, with higher education. Mm -hmm. um, but we are, you know, we are able to do that. We are able to go now to the universities. We understand the language. Our mothers and our aunties and our uncles, when they came, they also they also did not understand the language. And their struggle was a different struggle because it was a struggle of survival. Um, and uh, it was a, a struggle of uh, better pasture for our generation. Yes. So, um, and that I really want to acknowledge that because we sometimes forget that, um, you know, the people who paved the way for us paid a higher price mm. in order for mm. us to be here where to we be, are. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And so sometimes I even have a feeling that my doctor title is actually a communal title. Mm. <laughs> and if it can help somebody, then please let it, mm. it I am ready to do that. Um, and um, yeah, it, it does get frustrating sometimes because you now in terms of schools, for instance, when I see that um, a lot of conversations that, you know, were there before um, of what happens to our kids when they go to school, especially when they are black or when they have a migration background, is almost the same conversation that we're still having in 2024. Mm -hmm. um, it's um, very frustrating um, to see that, um, you know, you can go to a university and not have one single black professor. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It's very, very, very frustrating seeing that a lot of um, uh, black and um, students of color um, are not uh, reflected back in the structures. And with the structures, I mean in institutions, uh, whether um, uh, within the universities, whether in certain NGOs, whether in certain places like uh, in the administration. Um, but then um, at the same time, I think... Um, something has happened, right? Because we are here. Mm. Um, and um, as I said in the beginning, I, I sit in a place um, at the university where I know many, and that would not have been possible a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And so I'm very thankful for that generation. And I think it's also a way for me of saying that um, thank you for the struggle. Um, although the struggles are almost similar, but something has happened. Mm. Right. There has been a, a change. There has been a shift mm. uh, because when we don't see that change, when we don't see that something has happened in between, yeah. we mm. feel like we start, we have to start from zero. Yeah. Mm. And, and so, it's also very frustrating. And, exactly. Mm. We don't see anything. happening. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And I don't think we have to start from zero. And that's why I say we continue with the struggle. Mm. Uh, but we don't have to start from zero because there were people before. Mm. And so and I think it's our responsibility mm. Um as a younger generation, um, to always acknowledge that and mm. remember that. Mm. Because when we do that, we will not make the same mistakes. Mm. One, yeah. we learn something from it. Mm. And thirdly, we uh, we take it mm. over and it becomes something that is sustainable. It mm. becomes something that doesn't always have to start from zero, mm. right? Because when you start from zero and you say you are the only one or, you know, it, uh, um, you are only the first one, mm. it means the struggles before didn't take place. And that's yeah. not true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The struggles took place and they were there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I think in in that sense, yeah, mm -hmm. it's sometimes frustrating. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I work with, um, you know, the, the, the philosophy of hope. Mm. Um, um, hope not only for my generation but also for the next generation mm. but also of carrying it over mm. and giving it over to the next person mm. uh, and one boy knows this uh, I am not a gatekeeper no. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, that is one thing I think um, it is so important that um, as a community of peoples that we learn not to be uh, gatekeepers that mm. we, we give it to the next person we carry it on because that's the only way we will be able to um, have sustainable structures and be able to sustain what already our foremothers and our forefathers have already created for us mm. uh, and not having always that feeling of, oh, I'm starting from zero. Mm. But when we go back, then we see, no, you're not starting from zero. Something has happened. Very and then you carry it, you carry it on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What exactly do you do at the university? What is your job? If yeah. You can describe so it? at the university... And now I'm going to make a little bit of advertisement. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm at the University of Cologne. And uh, we are actually the first university in Germany to have a position uh, of uh, a representative for anti-racism. Mm -hmm. So okay. racism is critique. Yeah. And um, also to have me as a referent in for um, anti-racism, mm -hmm. um, referent in for racism is critique. And we are the wow. first universities and we have structures. Well um, done, Cologne. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, mm. 
all other positions are always attached to something else, but mm -hmm. ours is in particular only about anti um, anti racism. Mm -hmm. wow. So it's about anti racism laws and policies, and uh, we look at um, you know the structures, what um, not only students uh, but also employees need, uh, because um, we all know speaking about racism and um, anti discrimination within um, you know higher institutions like mm. you know schools or even universities, mm. such a difficult um, conversations because these are things that are seen that happen outside the institution mm. but never inside the institution. Mm. And so um, I think it's um, we are doing a great job not only because I'm there but also the people who were there before me and this was uh, the referat for gender and diversity the, because this is where my uh, my position is in. But now we have changed. We are uh, referat uh, Chancengerechtigkeit, which changed a few a few weeks ago. Uh, they had already done the work. What is that in English? Uh, Chance, what did you say? Chancengerechtigkeit. Mm. Um, Chance, oh Jesus, <laughs> Lord German, <laughs> my God. Chancen. Oh Jesus, I don't know. Yeah, uh, I could. I should have googled that. Before. We have it in. Is, uh, we have it in equality. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah. We have we have it in English. Uh, our department is also in English, has mm -hmm. been translated. Mm -hmm. Let me ah, check. Check yes. and then I repeat it. Chancengerechtigkeit. Yeah. <laughs> Which yeah. is really a very good thing to have. Chancengerechtigkeit. Mm -hmm. yes. yeah. It's the one thing that we really have. Yes. Carol is going to find that out soon. Yes. Chancengerechtigkeit. Yeah. English. We need a dictionary Equal here, opportunities. people. Equal opportunities department. So yeah, Chancengerechtigkeit. Equal <laughs> opportunities. <laughs> My God. <laughs> so easy. Equal opportunities, yeah. Yeah. Mm. So equal opportunities for for all. For all. For mm. all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um but of course mine um is more on the issue of racism mm. within uh within the universities, trying to build the structures that we need in order for us to be able to address racism within the university. Mm -hmm. Um so it means that uh, I am not working alone, so we uh, so we have the representative. And then we have me and we also have someone else who is responsible for the students. Um, and uh, we also work with other, um, with other students, organizations within mm. the university. But mm. before you were there, was this happening? Just don't be so modest. How much of this have you, have you put into action mm. without being modest now? No, I'm not being <laughs> I will try not to. No, the work had already started. So the okay. the the, the referent gender and diversity already started the work in 2019, okay. or even before that. And then I wasn't I wasn't at the University of Cologne. I was at the University of Trier, mm -hmm. uh, finishing my PhD. So by the time I came, they had already gone through the process of addressing this issue and why it's important to have this issue. And um, uh, black and students of color at the University of Cologne really demanded for this position, not only because of the George Floyd. Um, mm. uh, um, a case, but um, also before that. So uh, they address the issue of how the university cannot be blind to what is happening within the, within the society at large. Mm. Um, and so they said it's important that also the University of Cologne also deals with this or addresses this issue. Okay. So mm. when I came, our department had already started the conversation. They had already started doing the work. They had already doing, you know, the self-reflection. And then I came, um, um, I came in 2021 mm. in September. Okay. Mm -hmm. And since then, you know, we've been building uh, um, the, the structures. And it's not only me alone. We are a team of mm. people doing that. Because mm. it would be wrong for me to say I'm doing all the work alone because mm. that's not true. Mm. We are a team of people. And I'm mean, really, at this point, I would like to acknowledge that, again, I really have a good, uh, uh, um, a good team uh, where I am heard, I'm seen. And I'm actively involved mm -hmm. in what is happening. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm part of the decision making, mm -hmm. uh, which most of the time that's not the case. Yeah. Um, and um, my opinion matters mm -hmm. when it comes to um, to these issues because I am the expert in that sense. Mm -hmm. okay. Right. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. But so, it does make mm -hmm. make a difference because I know I studied at the University of Cologne and mm -hmm. I know my life at the university would have been easier, mm -hmm. definitely much easier if we had had a position with you in place at that university at that time. Mm -hmm. So it, it does make a difference that you as a black woman are there, even yeah. if the work has been started, but it, it, it goes a long way to have you as a black woman in that position right now, mm. which is also the struggle, like you've been saying, the struggle is not uh, going out to the street and fighting. 
it's feeling that position and being mm. present. Mm. When I come in that office, I see you as a black woman. Mm. It changes how I will tell my story. And that makes a whole difference. And that's true. And that's, and, and that's what we get a lot as a feedback, um, mm. especially when students both black students and students of color, even employees, want to report cases. Mm -hmm. um, one of the first things they say is that um, when they see it's someone who looks like them, yeah. it's, it's, it's a very different context. Yes. Um, it's easier for them to speak about it mm -hmm. um, because they don't have a feeling of being gaslighted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They don't they have us too. They exactly. Seen, yeah. exactly. Yeah. They don't have to justify mm -hmm. every experience, but mm -hmm. they understand that, okay, this person understands what I am saying mm -hmm. without having to, to say a lot. So yeah, it does make a lot of difference. Mm -hmm. um, and we need more of this, yes. right? Not only in, in my university, but um, in, in all in German all universities. universities, in all institutions, mm -hmm. um, and also in schools, we, di we do need, um, you know, representation because it matters. Mm -hmm. um, because when we have this, uh, you know, we cannot, um, we cannot deny that, um, people have different experiences within these institutions mm. and that the society has changed, whether yeah. some people like it or not, mm. it has changed. And do you uh, see that progressing to other universities as well? Because I, I find this uh, amazing now at the University of Cologne, mm. but that is just one university among so many universities in Germany. Do you see that progressing or is it, is there a chance of you working with the other universities to maybe start something like that? Employed only for the University of Cologne, but <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, we do also have other universities who want to go through the process because it's a process, right? And it's not an easy process. Mm. And the question is, are you ready to go through the process? Because one of my work is really, or one of our, uh, uh, the things that we do in our department is really look at things from a critical point of view. So the question is... What is uh, already happening in that Exactly. Universe, so we are questioning yeah. the structures. What do we need? What is needed? Mm. What needs to be changed? Uh, which new you know, policies do we need? Um, how are we going to uh, you know, guide both the students and the employees? How do we make the university a place where everybody feels comfortable? What are the structures needed? Um, and also this means the resources have to be there. So it could be that um, there are some universities who are doing that, but maybe they'll do it on a short term. Mm. And ours, and this is why I, I, um, you know, I say that the University of Cologne is doing a lot, and I'm very thankful for that, that they agreed and accepted to go through the process. Mm -hmm. And accepting to go through the process means there must be a kind of resource mm. uh, uh, that at comes yeah. with that it's money it's money well. exactly mm -hmm. and so um maybe some uh, some universities uh, are already starting to have this conversation um but how deep is the conversation and who are the people having the conversation mm. and i think sometimes yeah, I, think, I think it's more of who is having this conversation mm -hmm. yes. as the issue of resources because yes. they'll always put resources where they think is important yes exactly so how important is, is this, this yeah um so the university of cologne for many um, universities like a best practices uh, practice mm. university in terms of you know um not only um uh, racism or anti-racism but also in other things mm. um and other universities are also you know um starting to you know to 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 ask and also um start looking deeper into this question of um, how can we start um, speaking about racism within the university. Mm. Um, and for some people, it might sound as if, why do you always have to speak about racism? Um, but I think it's an important conversation because we have cases of students who experience so much within the universities that they drop out of the universities. Um, they get depression. Um, it's also a question of mental health. Mm. Um, it's also a question of, um, you know, some people, um, you know, using discriminative language, uh, which makes a lot, of, um, a lot of students or even a lot of employees very uncomfortable. But it's also a form of violence, right? Mm. Because when we say we all want to be educated in a, in a space where everybody is equal, then it cannot be the same space where violence is produced, mm. right? And so I think this is what we have to address uh, but also, um, I think um, in terms of institutions, because we all see that everywhere, it's not only, you know, universities, but it's also NGOs and also, you know, private companies where we're all speaking about diversity. And I'm kind of, um, you know, asking um, diversity doesn't mean that I am there, we are diverse. 
um, the conversation should be more of why um, didn't we have that before? And mm. when we decide to bring black and um, brown people or uh, people of color, depending on the term that you want to use for yourself, um, then the question goes even deeper. Like, why do we need them now? And what kind of a space have you created um, so that, you know, Njeri and someone else can feel comfortable mm. and can work without being the resource, yeah. right? Because I feel sometimes um, people do this to, you know, put somebody in that, in, in some position, mm. Token just to be, to be seen, to be seen mm. so that it can look like we are diverse here. Mm. But uh, you're so, you can do, you can't do anything mm. or change anything. Mm. You're just there as a representative of mm. the diversity or the, the, the black community. Mm. So without going so much deeper into your work, what structural changes have happened or are happening to maybe make uh, students comfortable mm. or um, the language that is used? Because I also know the issues of old books that have you know, language that is mm. not acceptable. Mm. So what, what kind of changes have you managed with your team to implement? Here is a quick one to tell you about our sponsors, TDX Media. I've been working with TDX Media for about five years now, and this has saved my life, literally saved my life. TDX Media has a way of helping you to optimize your office work. So I am a very chaotic person. My office was looking like... Um, like you can imagine it. And then TDX, TDX Media came and they really helped me to optimize the processes, especially the processes of how I work, what should happen when, you know, they came and advised me, they came and sorted out most of, you know, most of my files and all that because <laughs> I am not that. And then the, my website, my website, it's beautiful because it is being maintained, it is being serviced by TDEX Media. And then the CEO of the company, um, uh, Christian Tiedemann, who does all that, comes to you, advises you, he talks to you, he listens to you, listens to your needs, and then crafts everything according to how you need it, but adding his professionalism in everything that he does, such that at the end of it all, and he will not use anything he doesn't think is okay for your for the person visiting your website so if your photos are not good enough then he'll not put them in and that is the kind of the level of professionalism that i need when i'm working with someone so that they just don't do everything i tell them to do they tell me okay it's your website but it has my name on it so he will not do anything that is not professional enough and the other thing is event management guys these guys are so organized TDX Media is so organized, they, they have taken control and over, they organize our, Africa, our African festival, which happens every year. So I have nothing to do with it. The first year I organized it myself, I almost, go, I almost went crazy. And nowadays I just get calls or when we are talking, it's a yes, no, no, and I have nothing to do with it. It's the best thing that ever happened to me. I love working with these people. I love the way they, you know, present themselves in a way that is, I, I, I will talk about professionalism the whole time because that is what they are. They are professionals. And you see that in everything they do. When they are doing consultations with you, they are very specific in everything that they are doing. You can only be satisfied when you're working with TITIX Media. And I'm so glad that I have the trusted us now to sponsor our podcast. And I've been working with them all this time, satisfied with their work. I'll continue working with them. So please visit their website, www.tidix.de. That's www.tidex.de. Visit them because you'll be doing yourself a favor. Thank you so much. First of all, it might sound very easy. We've been able to open up spaces to speak about racism at the university, mm -hmm. which for many it might sound as if, mm, but you can. And it, this is the most difficult place to even start speaking about um, racism. Mm. 
Uh, one, because it's always seen as a very democratic space. It's seen as a space that is welcoming for everybody. And it's seen as a learning place where discrimination doesn't happen. Um, and so opening up or even having these conversations um, is one huge step. Mm. Um, the other one is um, that now students feel when they experience something at the university, there's a place they can go to, mm. right? Which I didn't have when I was there at the university because mm. I started at the University of Cologne. Um, when I experienced something, I didn't have that uh, uh, support system of going and speaking about it. A safe space. Uh, exactly. I, I mean, we can't have safe space because it can never be safe for us. Mm. Um, but uh, we can try and create safer bodies. And safer bodies can only be there when, you mm. know, a space can be created um, in order for me to feel safe. Mm. Yeah. So we can't safer... have safe space, you say? Why is that? Because then we would have to ask, what does that mean? We can make the spaces safer, but they cannot, they're not safe spaces. You know what I mean? Safe space would be, until now, some institutions have said, this is a space where everybody's welcome, so it's a safe space, mm, right? But so, it's not. But it's not, but we can create safer spaces okay. by starting to have these discussions, okay. right? Mm. And also these discussions can also only take place when we feel as human beings, that we can be safe, mm. right? Where I can go, for instance, when students or employees count our experience discrimination or racism at the university, and we have created safer spaces where it's possible to speak about mm. it. Okay. But a safe space, we cannot be able to create, mm. right? But safer. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's um, good enough, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Safe will mean uh, nothing is ever reproduced, exactly. and um, there is no, there's no, no new racism is being created, mm -hmm. no new heart is being created. But, but, that but is the, not, the yeah. fact of being there in that university is already uh, causing a lot of, um, yeah. It's already just step, stepping into that space. It's already an aggression sometimes, mm. depending on which books you see, who mm. you who is teaching. There's so many mm. things that happen such that it cannot be safe. But it can. I mean, this safe space, safer space discussion. Uh, the people who are in academia, um, it's it's a very, it's a controversial yeah. mm. word, the safe mm. space and safer space. Mm. But yeah, yeah. For the purpose of this conversation, I it's think it's a safer space. It's yeah. a safer space, and mm -hmm. we we do understand what you mean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that that uh, sounds like a lot. And yeah. you're a mother, <laughs> and I'm a mother of two. <laughs> yes. How oh, do? By the way, <laughs> by the way, <laughs> no, it's not a by the way. Uh, two lovely kids. I yeah. met them uh, the time you were here. Yes. They are really, really amazing. Yes. Kids, very eight and six. Just like the mother, they mm. speak their minds, mm -hmm. and you you feel their presence, mm -hmm. like <laughs> Jancha. And oh yeah, you just Our matriarch. Yeah, mm -hmm. you just feel, and and I find that really amazing. Mm -hmm. um, that at that young age, they already occupy the space. That mm -hmm. is so yeah. good, yeah. really. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I also think this is something that is also given from home, right? So my mother is also the same. My mother mm -hmm. is very outspoken. Um, my mother lets you ask questions and she'll explain. Mm. And so there was always that thing of, you know, brought up differently, mm. uh, where uh, safer spaces were created to be able to speak mm -hmm. um, and to be able to, um, to be who, who, you, who you are, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. And I think that's something that has um, have given over or has been, again, carried over to my own children mm. that when they ask, and they do ask a lot of questions, like... Oh, yes, they do. When Tante mm. Wambo is in our place, they will ask a lot of questions mm. and they will not give up until they understand what it yeah. means. Mm. Yeah. Um, sometimes it can be tiring, and I understand that. But at the same time, I think it's important for them to have that space to be able to ask and um, to understand mm. Um what they're asking yeah mm. yeah and not to give up you know sometimes mm. you give up on the answer when nobody's answering your question mm. the right way you sort of give up and say okay nobody i don't want to take too much time mm. you know i don't want to take too much of your time so let me just accept the answer that mm. you're giving yeah. but they're not like that you know they take up as much time and space as yeah. they need and yeah. i'm i learn a lot from your kids yeah thank you know you. <laughs> just knowing i'm gonna take as much time as i need yes. to get this yeah and that looks like something you do consciously yes 
um, because it can be it can happen very easily here that our children are silenced yes mm. uh, not seen mm. not heard mm -hmm. because you know they are immigrant kids mm -hmm. they they don't know they have no idea mm. so um in the school where your kids are how active are you in you know as a parent uh being seen also because when we are present our kids feel safer mm -hmm. to also um show their presence mm -hmm. and um we mostly tend to you know, remain behind mm. and not talk, passive. not passive. Mm. Um, what do you think about that? Being active where your kids are. I'm one of those mothers. <laughs> <laughs> if one can say I that. I can imagine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I am one of those mothers. I will ask questions I want to understand. Um, and, um, and I think it, this is so important, um, especially for our kids because what they go through um, in the school system is also not easy for them. Mm. And so when we do not create a space um, at home where they can ask, uh, where they can understand, where they are outspoken, um, where else will they do that? Um, in school, uh, most of the time, this is not possible. So my school, uh, and my kids go to, um, I don't know if I'm able, I'm I, I can mention this, but they go to a good school. Mm. Uh, where, um, you know, um, they can also ask questions. Mm. Um, I did not take them to a regular school mm. uh, because I knew that um, and we knew that um, our kids are smart and um, we, want them, we wanted them to have every opportunity they can have. And so we chose a different school and that's where they go to. And I can see uh, for my kids, uh, this was the right choice. Although it wasn't easy, mm. no school is easy um, here, no matter um, how, sometimes how hard we try, mm. um, because it's the same, same educational system. It's the same teachers who, who teach mm. it's almost, um, and some things are also reproduced um, by the teachers or even in schools. So, um, but I can see um, that uh, they are able to breathe. Right. Mm. So the first thing that I did, and I think um, this is something that uh, most of us don't do. I took uh, my kids um, to um, Tagus Muta. Mm -hmm. um, so like a nanny? It's like a nanny. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, where they were also with other kids. Mm. Um, and um, not only because I was working, but also because it was also a way of preparing them um, also to go to the kindergarten, mm. but also to go to school, you know, like. You know, when kids are only with the mother the whole time or yeah. even with the parents, yeah. letting go is so difficult, right? Mm. Uh, or when you go, they think you're not coming back. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, when they're already at the, uh, when they're with other kids, they uh, learn a lot from each other. Mm. Um, but also um, they know, okay, my mom or my dad will go and come back. Mm. Um, so um, it kind of, for me, I felt it was a, a healthy way of also teaching them sometimes to let go, mm. but also to be independent. Um, and uh, when they went to the kindergarten, it wasn't that difficult for them also to adapt to the kindergarten mm. and also um, to school because they already knew the system, yeah, right? They yeah. already understood, okay, I go there, this is what, this mm. what can be done. Yeah. And it was much easier for them. Um, I think it's so important, um, especially we as black parents, that we are involved in the school life and in the kita life of our kids. Mm. Um, I understand that sometimes you don't understand the school system. Uh, and this again is another uh, is another privilege that we have because if you've gone here to school, then you understand. And if you can, you know, speak the language, then you understand the different school systems that we have here. Uh, I also, uh, but I also at the same time think even if you do not understand the language, this should not be a hindrance. Mm. Uh, one can Google, you know, you can educate yourself and see, okay, um, what kind of school or kita are my kids going to? Um, because I've seen this a lot now on social media where we have a lot of black parents who are complaining about the experiences of their kids and mm. sometimes they don't even know what to do. And I must say, maybe in this sense, I'm a little bit radical that I say, you know, or I can write and say, um, go directly to the school or directly to the, um, to the office and mm. ask why this is happening. Because if you don't speak for our children, who's going to speak for them? We are our children's speakers mm. and we need to protect our kids. Uh, because sometimes when you hear what happens in Kita, because it starts very earlier, 
um, and it goes on mm. even up to abitua, right? Um, and so um, I am very much involved. Mm. Okay. I yeah. ask my kids every day what happened at the kita and at mm. the school. Mm. These are the conversations that we have while we are eating. Yeah. I um, I'm very much interested in what they experience in school, and I also um, I'm very much aware when I see a change, and when I see a change, mm. um, I you know observe it, and when I see nothing is changing. I'm one of those mothers. Mm. I will go to the kita and to the school and ask and say, you know, my my daughter or my son said this and this, or I can see there's a change. What's happening? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And not seeing the the school as the monster, as the enemy, or um, you know, this fear of stepping into that space and asking questions. Mm. And I think for most, even if you don't speak the language. Um, like you say, there's always one good person. Mm. There's always someone, even in that space, you can speak to. Mm -hmm. But if you stay away, mm. you never have a chance of actually really finding out what's going on. Mm. Mm -hmm. And also, I think, depending, because what, I've, what's, what I have observed is that a lot of uh, black parents fear mm. um, speaking um, either to teachers in school or even in the kindergarten. Mm. Uh, because, of course, they come from a different school system mm. where you don't question the teacher. Yeah, you don't question yeah exactly. The, yeah. You know, yeah. uh, you don't go to the head headmaster or headmistress office and ask something mm. that concerning your child. Mm. Um, but then here, again, it's a different place, it's a different space. You do have to do that. Yeah, and, and uh, kids at home are confronted with very different mm -hmm. um, things. Mm. There's this thing, you're all students. Mm -hmm. The differentiation is this one is maybe cleverer, it's a nice student, a bit, mm. but this thing of racism or mm. discrimination is not there. It's not mm. part of yeah, it. Yeah, it's not mm. part of it. Mm. So our kids are dealing with very different things, mm. very different issues that we did not deal with. Yeah. Mm. And you have to really um, consciously uh, be a part of them and ask questions, also wanting and trusting what they tell you is really what they are going through. Mm. Because I have seen cases where the child says something and you as parents say, that cannot be, mm. like, he cannot have meant that. Mm. But, you know, just believing what they tell you is how they feel. Mm. And then thinking about what to do next, mm. go to that school, asking the kid also, because now Ma, I was telling one boy the other day, my kids sometimes just tell me things because they want to talk about them. Mm -hmm. And when, you know, my mother instinct is, I'll go to that. Center. No, I was just telling you that this is what happened. Mm. And I'll take care of it myself. Mm. So also trusting that they are able to take, because I've given them that power. Mm -hmm. They have seen me doing things. So yeah. now they feel that they are, they are at that um, stage where they can also take care of their, of their own things mm. and also asking them what do you think we should do mm. because yes. I think it's, it's, it's them mm. dealing you know when they are still young it's yeah. you to always step in and, mm -hmm. and do and do and do and mm. really I was, I, I was like you I'm like you I was there I was going there I was saying whatever I had to say and if my kid told me something and the next day I'm in school and I'm talking about it but now I really Ask them, mm. what do you think we should do? Mm -hmm. Should I go to school? Should I talk about it? Should I write to the teacher? And sometimes they say, I don't feel comfortable talking about that. Could you please do it? Mm -hmm. And then sometimes they tell me, uh, no, I'll, I'll, I'll deal, deal with, with that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I trust that they do it. Sometimes mm -hmm. I, I feel like I'll, I need to ask, you know, but mm -hmm. then... I, I think that I would break the trust, mm. you know, just showing them you cannot handle that on your own, mm. which is not good for their self-confidence. Mm. They have to know that they can also, mm -hmm. you know, uh, deal with their deal own with problems. Their problems. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But then you also created that atmosphere for them. They have seen you in moments where when they needed you, you were there yeah. and you fought for them and you protected yeah. them and you yeah. did not gaslight them. Exactly. Mm. You did yeah. not tell them what you're experiencing is wrong or mm. what you... What, what, what you feel is not right. Mm -hmm. They told to you their feelings. Exactly. Always, yeah, um, yeah. And I think when they are small, this is what we can do. Mm -hmm. We we speak life to them, yeah, right? Yeah. And we empower them mm -hmm. in terms of allowing them to speak about what they experience so mm -hmm. that when they are older, you can be able to have that conversation. Yeah. 
do you think this is something that I should intervene in or mm. is this something that yeah. you want to yeah. speak about? Yeah. Um, but that can only happen when also the parents themselves do the work. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like we understand and have these conversations yeah. with our kids because if we don't or if we have the same, uh, um, you know, the same mentality or the same thinking that maybe we had when we were, um, you know, home mm. um, uh, and home can be different for different uh, for different people, um, it doesn't translate that here, mm. right? Um, here, our kids deal with a different baggage yeah, and we must yeah. understand that's a different baggage. Yeah, yeah. And so we need to find strategies and ways to be able to assist, uh, support, um, but also be able to speak with our children mm. um, when they have these baggages yeah. because and they, they are there see. and that's the reality. Yeah. They have to see that something can be done. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that is the biggest thing. It's I had this, it hurt me. Yeah, okay, we hope nothing happens mm -hmm. now often. No, they have to see that something can be done mm -hmm. to correct the situation mm -hmm. or just to speak and make that person mm -hmm. reflect on what they say. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. some of them say, I didn't think that was wrong. Mm -hmm. And after you pointing it out, mm -hmm. they maybe will not do that to the next child. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So them seeing that something can be done is one of the most important things. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, we as parents have to start that from a very early yes. yeah. age. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> I think when we start speaking, uh, it yeah. doesn't, it doesn't, we can go on and we on. We can go on and on. Yeah. yeah. But uh, we've got a very broad picture of what you do and you're doing an amazing job thank you dr jerry thank and you we are so proud of you yeah. thank because you because that's how we feel when one of us is doing these amazing jobs in these places where we normally don't see uh, people who look like us mm -hmm. and uh, we hope that more and more and more and more are coming and continue do continue doing the work that many on whose shoulder you stand started yes thank you yeah. thank you yeah. yeah i hope so too that it can be carried over to the yeah. next generation and that yeah. mm. um you know um it will make an impact yeah. if not for me then at least for the next generations mm -hmm. yeah. to come mm -hmm. and i think yeah. um, everybody can play however small the part you feel you're playing it's good enough because it's always moving ahead mm. and not not being stagnant mm -hmm. and not going you know, it's not going back. It's mm -hmm. not going back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Even when sometimes it feels like it's a, it's a repetition. Yeah. That it isn't. Yeah. You know? It isn't. Yeah. Just with us three sitting here and mm -hmm. having this conversation. Yeah. yeah. Already that that is a long way from, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, we are our, our, our great, great grandmother's dreams. Yeah. Right? Exactly. And creating our own tables. Where, yeah. yeah. You know, because this is our own table. We are not yeah. waiting yeah. to be invited mm -hmm. to speak about such things. And yeah. this is, uh, yeah. We should continue with this journey that we are on yeah. of making our lives a little bit better, a little bit safer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Jerry, for coming all the way from Cologne. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah. Love so, you being here. People, this was uh, an amazing conversation and uh, we hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Mm -hmm. Please, like always, subscribe, share, comment, and uh, we'll see you next week. See you next week. Yeah. Bye-bye. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.